Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Lord, we give you the highest praise. We bless your name today, O God, because you are good. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. O oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord and he heard me and delivered me from all my fears. They looked unto him and were lightened and their faces were not ashamed. This poor man cried and the Lord heard him and saved him out of all his troubles. The angel of the Lord encampeth round about them that fear him and delivereth them. O oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusteth in him. O oh, fear the Lord, ye saints, for there is no want to them that fear him. The young lions do lack and suffer hunger, but they that seek the Lord shall not want any good thing. Come, ye children, hearken unto me. I will teach you the fear of the Lord. What man is he that desireth life and loveth many days that he may see good? Keep thy tongue from evil and thy lips from speaking guile. Depart from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. The eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous and his ears are open unto their cry. The face of the Lord is against them that do evil to cut off the remembrance of them from the earth. The righteous cry and the Lord heareth and delivereth them out of all their troubles. The Lord is nigh unto them that are of a broken heart and save it such as be of a contrite spirit. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivereth him out of them all. He keepeth all his bones, not one of them is broken. Evil shall slay the wicked, and they that hate the righteous shall be desolate. The Lord redeemeth the soul of his servants, and none of them that trust in him shall be desolate. Hallelujah. Psalm 34. Thank you, Lord. We bless your name today, God. We glorify your name and we give you thanks for all that you have done and all that you're about to do, even in our midst this morning, Lord. Bless your people. Bless your word to their hearts and cause change and transformation to take place. Take charge of the airwaves, O God, and cause your word to come forth with power, with anointing, and with clarity. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Amen, amen, amen. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord our God. Good morning, friends. Good morning. This is Diane, and I'm coming to you today with another word of encouragement. I am coming to you today with another word from the Word of God. And it is always my hope that by the time we get to the end of the devotion that you are blessed, you are encouraged, you are motivated, your spirit is lifted, and you feel that strength, even your inner strength, coming alive to take on the day. Because friends, you see every single day that the Lord has given us this gift of life, it is another opportunity to see his goodness all around us. 
to experience his manifested presence in our lives. Every single step that we make are ordered by the Lord and we have to understand that. There are no missteps or mistakes with God. He is infallible. We are fallible. We make mistakes. We do things at times that do not even please him. But his mercy and his grace keeps us. And all we have to do is say, Father, forgive me. I have sinned. I have messed up. Help me, Lord. And we seek him and we turn away from those things that we know are in our lives that do not please God. Because it has to be our desire to please him. We must want to know more about him. Friends, it's not always easy enough to go through life and make the right decision every single time. But with the Holy Spirit as our guide, all things are possible. All things are possible. Today, a question is being asked. Are you teachable? And I'm asking myself the same question. Diane, are you teachable? Because it's so important for us to remain teachable, friends. If we're going to get anywhere with God, we have to be teachable. What is teachable? What is being teachable? Teachable. When you're teachable, it means that you are open to instructions. It means that you are eager and willing to learn. You see, this is what I've found from time to time. There are many great teachers around us. And when I say teacher, I'm not just talking about a teacher by profession, where they actually did the studies to become a teacher and they're now teaching. I'm talking about anyone who is in that role. So it could be a pastor, it could be a minister, another minister in the body of Christ. It could be whoever, someone in the community. It really doesn't matter because any of us, all of us, should want to be teachable. It's one thing to know some things already, but nobody knows everything. The only person that knows everything is God. It's God. That's what makes him omniscient. He's the all-knowing God. So the Lord doesn't need to consult with us to find out anything. He is so infinite in his knowledge and wisdom that the Bible declares that his ways are past finding out. We cannot even fathom God. We cannot even begin to think that we're his equal. Some act like they are. You know, we call them demigods. But today, I want us to understand that the Lord requires us to be teachable because that's the only way we're going to truly learn. We can have lots of knowledge. Some people are bright. They're brilliant. You know, intelligent, intellectual. But listen, it doesn't matter how brilliant you consider yourself. It's so important to remain teachable, to remain humble, so that more, more useful knowledge can be added to your life, to our lives. You have some people, you will never hear them say this, these words, I never knew that, or... I never looked at it that way before. You would never hear those words coming from their mouths because they believe they know everything. You understand? We don't want to be caught up in that type of attitude. We need to remain teachable if we are going to reach places or go anywhere with God. When we look in his word, we look at Psalms 25 verses 4 and 5. It declares, show me thy ways, O Lord. Teach me thy paths. Lead me in thy truth and teach me. 
for thou art the God of my salvation. On thee do I wait all the day. That's the King James Version. The New Living Translation says, Show me the right path, O Lord. Point out the road for me to follow. Lead me by your truth and teach me, for you are the God who saves me all day long. I put my hope in you. Friends, let us not be weary or afraid to cry out to God, asking him to teach us, to show us his paths, his ways, and his way of doing things. Because we may have our own ideas. We may think that we got this. But if we would only consult with God, half of our problems, maybe more, would be solved. But you see, we want to just go at things and we have already formed a particular opinion and we're working that way. We don't stop to ask for guidance, directions. And then when things go awry, we are surprised. We become discouraged and depressed. Some even declare out of their lips, nothing I do turns out right. It's not that nothing you do turns out right. It's just that you need to seek guidance before moving ahead. Sometimes we come to crossroads in our lives and the Lord wants to guide us. But no, we want to move full speed ahead without the knowledge that is needed for what's up the road. So let us change the way we have been doing things. Because if we keep doing the same thing and expecting a different result, it is said that that is the definition of insanity. So let us ask the Lord to show us the right path. The right path. Let's not be afraid to do that. I guess some people wonder if they do pray and ask the Lord to lead and direct, if he really would. And I would like to say to you today, it's, that's a resounding yes. He will create circumstances that will become teachable moments. And you will get your answer if you just have patience and if you just wait. There are some things that we say we're waiting on the Lord to show us and to teach us and he had already given us the green light or shown us the way, but we're lagging behind. But then there are some things we must wait on the Lord, wait for him to teach us, wait for him to show us the way. Psalm 143.10 says, Teach me to do thy will, for thou art my God. Thy spirit is good. Lead me in the land of uprightness. In the New Living Translation, Teach me to do your will, for you are my God. May your gracious spirit lead me forward on a firm footing. I like that. Because when the Spirit of the Lord leads us, we, we are on a solid footing, firm footing, solid rock. I mean, that should be the desire of our lives. To always be on that rock where it doesn't matter what's going on around us. It doesn't shift our focus. It doesn't shift us from standing firm and standing strong in God if we would only ask him to lead and direct us. Let me tell you, sometimes the Lord protects us from ourselves. I could testify about that. Sometimes the Lord protects his children from themselves. Some of us, we are so quick and ready to just run about and do, you know, what we want and we don't ask and we don't we don't check with anybody. And the Lord himself have to sometimes <laughs> create a situation that slows us down. And after we have been slowed down, that's when we realize had we gone full speed ahead this time, we would have ended up in bales of trouble. But that's how good our God is. 
he orders the steps of the righteous. So if we become sold out to God, we can expect him to lead us. All right? So just a few things. If you are teachable or you are teachable if, and these are just a few things that I'm going to share with you now. You are teachable if you are aware of your strengths and your weaknesses. If you're not aware of your strengths and weaknesses, in other words, you must know what your limitations are and those things that you are really, really good at. If you don't know the distinction between those two, then perhaps you're not teachable in that those things that are those areas that you think you may be strong in, perhaps it's actually weak and needs some work. But you know, some of us dare not even suggest to some people that, you know, maybe you need some help in this particular area. Because listen, some people will fly off on you, you know. <laughs> Arrogance causes that. Pride causes that. All right, you're teachable if you seek help. And that's what that leads to. So you know what your strengths and your weaknesses are. And you say, okay, all right, this is my strong area here. But in this other area, let me seek some help. Some people are not good at delegating. You know, they're not good at passing on stuff to others so that they can get the help they need. At the same time, the task is being done efficiently and effectively. You know, we, we, we don't, some of us don't like to ask somebody else to help with this because some of us believe that it is best done if done by us. Yes, you have some perfectionists. I fall in that bracket sometimes, I'll confess. <laughs> you know, it, you believe the only person who could do this task to the best of knowledge and abilities yourself. But we have to learn to seek help, especially in the areas that we're not so strong. All right? When you are teachable, you take notes. You take notes. Have you ever been in a particular environment? It could be an environment at work, and perhaps you're new on the job. But because you came from a previous job with certain knowledge and experience, you believe that this new company operates the same way or should. Well, my friends, I have learned that every single environment is different. They may do similar work, but the way that this one goes about it may be different. And we have to learn to adapt. So when you're being given that orientation, walk with a little notepad and take notes. Don't just say, okay, I'm committing this to memory. Okay, okay, this is stuff I know already. I know this, I know this. Yeah, 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 I used to do that before. Yeah, 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 I know, I know. And then after that session is over, you run back to everybody asking, um, how you do this again? How you do this? <laughs> Listen, take notes, man. Take notes so that you can go back and check even before asking anything you know take the initiative all right you're teachable if you learn from criticism now that's a tough one because some of us don't like to be criticized in any way shape or form we believe that you know we are the most efficient at everything and if somebody just dare to open the mouth and say that could have been done another way or you know we're quick to defend it quick to defend you know our honor you know i had a, a an experience or i should say an encounter with someone last week let me just say a bureaucrat and i understand that when persons have gotten to certain levels in their profession and they consider themselves professionals, it can be very insulting to them, even if done in a kind way, 
to say you made a mistake here. I mean, that is so offensive. They, they think that, you know, they're beyond mistakes. I guess some of them think they're Jesus because the only person that never made a mistake here on earth is Jesus. But we have to understand that it doesn't matter how far our professions have taken us in life and what our positions are. It's still a good thing to remain teachable. Some people are so arrogant. Nobody can teach them anything, tell them anything. I know this thing. I've been doing this for years. And listen, I had to say to that person, you made a mistake. And it seems as if it was the most insulting thing. You understand? Because of their position. And then what I saw them doing was trying to cover up the mistake. So instead of taking responsibility, which brings me to the next point, someone who is teachable takes responsibility for their failures and seek lessons to learn. So that was a teachable moment. You know, that was a moment where a person could look at themselves and say, you know what? You know, something really went off right here. Let me see how I can fix that or correct that or try to redeem the time. No, they took a defensive position as if, you know, do you know who I am? That kind of thing. <laughs> but friends, listen, do not let anybody at all intimidate you especially because they have this upper hand and all of that right responsible people take ownership teachable people take ownership of failures and seek to learn from them if you're teachable you also read books and you seek answers I love to read and that's not why this one is there <laughs> but seriously if you if you are someone who seeks after knowledge you you would read more and seek to find out there are some people who if somebody asks them a question uh, say on the job then back to the job situation and they don't know the answer because that's not their department don't just tell the customer or the client that I don't know say to them I will check and get back to you. I will find out. But you see, people who are not teachable, that's not their response. They're like, that's not my job. That's not my department. I don't care. Don't ask me. I don't know. You know, that's the attitude as well. That's not a teachable attitude. And this is why sometimes some people are promoted on the job and others who believe they are more qualified are left behind at times because they're not teachable. It's like they have arrived. But today, friends, we're being reminded, you know, to let our lives become teachable where the Lord himself can instruct us. And I like what it says in Jeremiah 33, verse three, call unto me and I will answer thee and show thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not. I'll read that again in another version. Ask me and I will tell you remarkable secrets you do not know about things to come. So you see, friends, when you seek after knowledge, when you seek to know more, when you are teachable, the Lord is able to reveal things to you because you can handle the information. You have a teachable spirit. You are open to instructions. You are eager and willing to learn. Isn't God good? He gives us these teachable moments, these opportunities to learn. And that's what I want to encourage us with today, friends, to ask ourselves, Every now and then, am I teachable? Am I teachable? Do I think I know everything? Do I, am I a know-it-all? Or I seek out the knowledge, even from those who may know more. Let's remain teachable. 
All right, let's pray. Father, I give you praise. I thank you today, O oh God, because you are good. You are great and greatly to be praised. We thank you, God, for your mercy towards us. It's really your mercy. It's because of your mercy why we're not consumed. So today, God, even as we begin this brand new week, this ninth day of September 2019, Lord, I pray that you would give us a teachable spirit. You'd cause us, O oh God, to humble ourselves to the point where we recognize our limitations and we seek help when necessary. Help us, O oh God, not to become puffed up with ourselves, full of ourselves, but to remain humble, to humble ourselves in your mighty hand. Lord, bless your people today. Cause them to experience you in a brand new way. Give them encounters with you. Cause your manifested presence, O oh God, to envelop their lives. Yes, Lord, that's what we need. We need more of your presence in our lives so that we can move forward in love, in understanding, in joy, in peace. Yes, Lord, help us to exercise the fruit of the Spirit at all times. And in the end, O oh God, we will all reap our just rewards. So Lord, today, I ask you to continue to look out for and watch over the people of the Bahamas, Lord, even as they continue to recover from devastation. Lord, it's not your will that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Let this be a teachable moment, O oh God, for all of us. Not just those in the Bahamas, but for all of us. That you love and care about us, O oh God, and you're always calling us to yourself. So help us to see, Lord, your hand in this in drawing your people back to you. So Lord, bless our lives, even as we continue to trust in you. Keep us teachable, Lord. That's our prayer. We desire to know more of you, so much more that we can share with others, so much more that we can effectively affect the lives of every single person we meet. Lord, I thank you today that lives are being changed. They are being transformed according to the power that you have, O oh God, and that you have even given unto us. You have given us the authority to take charge and to rule and to have dominion in the earth. So we will not fear because you have not given us that spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. We thank you now, God, for the sound mind. We thank you, God, for all that you have done. And we thank you, God, for all that you will do in our lives. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus, even for that person who is not feeling too well right now. They're feeling sick. They don't even know why. But Lord, I pray that you would touch them even now. Heal and deliver in the mighty name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Lord, let your healing virtue flow even now through the airwaves, touching bodies bodies that are hurting, bodies that are in pain. Touch your people, O oh God, and let them experience a supernatural event in their lives, a miracle, O oh God. 
I thank you now, Father. I speak life to every dead situation that's going on in that body right now. Life in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Lord, you only spoke the word and healing took place and you have given us that same authority. So we speak now to every illness, every condition that is trying to cripple your people, that's trying to hold them back and keep them back. Lord, I thank you now that your healing virtue is flowing even now, even now. It doesn't matter where they are. Your Holy Spirit has already located them. Touch them now, Lord. Yes, Lord, do it, God. Do it, Father. In the mighty name of Jesus. Now let your peace wash over them, God. Knowing that you will bring them out. You will. Yes, Lord. Whatever the situation, whatever it is, some are hurting even now over stuff, circumstances. Heal, God. Heal and deliver in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, mighty God. We give you praise now. In Jesus' mighty name, amen, amen, amen. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Friends, our God is mighty. He is real. Listen, as real as you are, as real as those who are around you are, our God is even realer than that. <laughs> He's real, friends. I'm telling you. He shows up in our situations. He shows up in our circumstances. He changes things. And you know that it's nobody but him. It's nobody but him. So I wait to hear the testimonies from you regarding what the Lord has been doing in your lives. Those who are going through hard times, hold on. Hold on. Our God is more than able and nothing you're going through lasts forever. No way. It doesn't matter what it is. It will not last forever. So you declare this too shall pass. All right. And you have to believe it. Don't just say it. You must believe it that the Lord is working on your stuff. And all those areas that seem not to be coming together. The Lord will work it out. All may not come together at the same time, but the Lord is working it out. All right? So you'll be blessed today. May the favor of God run you down, overtake you, go ahead of you, open doors that were sealed shut. Because when God opens a door for you, my friends, no man can shut it. Sometimes people try to keep you back, keep you down, stifle you, try to just mess you up. But God, the Lord is on your side. You and God, you and God, even if it's you and God alone, you are the majority. There is more with you than with those who are against you. All right? This, these are not cliche. This is facts. When the Lord is fighting for you, you are more than a conqueror. You are victorious. They try to get rid of you in so many different ways, but none of them seem to be working. You know, it is said, and I'll just say this and close. It is said that in the event of an atomic bomb, only one insect would survive that, and it's the cockroach. Now, while well, I'm not calling anybody a cockroach, right? But you are like that. They have sent their wickedest weapons against you, but you're still standing. They try everything to break you down, but you're still standing. You're still here, giving God thanks and praise, worshiping Him living a joyful life 
you're blessed. All right, yes, may have a little trouble here and there, but hey, you're blessed. That's what motivates me, friends. That's what keeps me on the firing line is when I think about the goodness of God, how far he has brought me from, where he has me now, and where he's showing me that he's taking me. I don't have time, friends, to stay in a corner and complain or weep or mourn. No, I'm pressing forward with God. You understand? Don't let anything hold you back. Be so determined, right, in God. Let it be that your mind is so made up that nothing can stop you. The Lord is with you. He's on your side. He's your friend. Just have, once you have that relationship with him, he's your friend. You can call on him anytime. When everybody else is asleep, your God is there up with you. So you call on him and watch him turn your circumstances around. And when he has turned them around, remember to say, thank you, Lord. I bless your name. I appreciate it. All right. So may the Lord bless you today. And until we meet again in this fashion, friends, take care.